We have rules and you need rules. Mm -hmm. Um, But some of the rules I would just make up and not let you know about it. (laughs) And so you would come home and I'm like, take off your shoes. It's a new rule. Everybody has to take off their shoes in the house. And you're just like, yes, ma'am. And I'm like, don't put them there. Put them over here. Take, you know, I'm barking all of these rules at you. What I found is, okay, that was a mistake. Don't do that because that doesn't turn out nice. But when we have a family meeting, we can sit down together and I say, hey, babe, I would like to make these rules because of these reasons. And We talk one another. And now it's not my rules that you have to obey like one of the kids. It's our rules. Well, that is a principle right there for any team or any organization. Mm -hmm. It's what we call Mm buy-in. So even as a senior leader, if I come to my staff and I'm like, hey, guys, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we're going to do that. There's a percentage of early adapters that are like, yeah, let's go. Then we got the mid adapters like, I'm not sure. Then we got the late adapters. They're like, I don't see it at all. And so as a leader, my job is to get buy-in. And so as a wife, what you're trying not to do is go in and just bark orders, but you're presenting them in a way, this is what I'd like to do and why, because then it's not your rules, it's our rules. And I just feel like it's important that when we have talked, but there's a, a, what we're just saying is like high level, because you Mm -hmm. gotta have family meetings, you gotta have communication, and we're trickling on down to agreement, you know? But I think it's it's important. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Hey, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha. This is the Valentine's Day week edition right here. There is some love in the atmosphere. Of course, I'm here with Tabitha. We've been married for 24 years at this point. It's been the best 22 years of my life. Come on, babe. But um, we're getting better and better as time goes along. And I would like to just say happy Valentine's Day. And I would also like to publicly ask, will you be my Valentine? Oh, that is so sweet and unexpected. Yeah. You're so sweet. Is the answer yes? Yes, you are. I am your forever Valentine. Forever Valentine. Yes. So I hope you guys had a great day on yesterday. And uh, we got a lot of great things we're going to share with you on the day. We actually, today's segment is called Five Ways to Care for Your Husband. We were going to call it Five Ways to Take Care of Your Man. But uh, we like to keep it tomato, focused. tomato. But th- you're a specialist in this, and I just think it's going to help a wife. It's going to help a woman really understand some it's things gonna that be she can fun. do. Yeah, to take it's, care of her man. Yeah, it's going to be fun. But listen, before we get into it, uh-huh. I want to say thank you mm-hmm. to everyone out there for tuning in. We appreciate you so much, and we are just blessed to be able to be a blessing yeah. that our lives can impact you, yeah. motivate you, help you, that you can learn from our mistakes. And listen, I wanted to read this one testimony that came in, mm-hmm. um, and this is from Kara Lopez. I don't know if I'm saying that right, 57. Mm-hmm. But she says, I think it's, I'm assuming she. Thank you guys so much for all of your content, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I had been asking God to help me and show me what I need to see. And then your videos started showing up for me and you've helped me so much. I even started playing your video loud in front of my boyfriend one day, and now he listens to you too, exclamation mark. This is all so helpful to us not having parents on the on either side to show us truly how to live a God in a godly way. You've been like parents for us and we couldn't be more thankful. What a blessing. How sweet is that? Thank you so much for writing in. And it's such an honor to be a part of your lives. And that's why we do what we do. You know, we really started this podcast with one main theme in mind. We wanted to help people grow closer to God, number one, but also closer to the relationships and the people that God has placed in their life. So if you're new to our podcast, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you can be the first Mm -hmm. to get the content when it's dropped. And I would also like to say that we now, we have developed a tool to really be able to help you have a better marriage. Now, if you Ooh, want to have a better it. marriage, let us know in the comments right now. But I believe you're here and you're watching this because you really want to have a better marriage. Or maybe you're single, but you know somebody that needs to have a better marriage. I am happy to announce that we have officially launched the Better Marriage Boot Camp online. All right. Woo-hoo. This is a 90-day journey with yours truly, Ken and Tabitha. We want to walk with you. We have been married for 24 years, and we do not know everything. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We don't know everything, (laughs) but we know what we know. (laughs) We've had some ups, y'all, and we've had some downs. And what we've done is we've put our foot Mm. in. That's what they say back in the day. When you put your foot in it, that means that (laughs) we we gave you everything we have in a 12-part boot camp. We're going to help you whip your marriage into shape. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to make an investment. You know, many times people want something for nothing, and it just doesn't work that way. There's an investment that you have to make. 
make. And I really think that marriages that are on cruise control mm -hmm. will end up being shipwrecked mm. because marriage is something that after you do it five years, 10 years, you can say, well, we've already done that. And if you're on cruise control, you're probably declining instead of inclining. Yeah. And marriage takes an investment, just like going to the gym, just like, you know, improving at your career. You have to invest in the most important human relationship that you have on the planet, which is your marriage. And so my question would always be for people, how many conferences have you went to about marriage? Mm -hmm. How many books have you read about marriage? Mm -hmm. How many podcasts have you read? And, read? and many times it's like, well, I did that five years ago or 10 years ago. No, we need to be investing in this Constant, relationship. continual, consistently. Continually. And so to help you guys with that, we got so many DMs and emails asking for marriage counseling, and we knew we couldn't meet with everybody, but now we have the Better Marriage Boot Camp, mm -hmm. a 90-day, 12-part um, um, training module to help good marriage, bad marriages become good, good marriages become great, and great marriages become out of this world. If you want more information about the Better Marriage Boot Camp, go over to KenandTabitha.com. That website link should be in the show notes, and you can find more information out about that, and we're excited about that. But are you ready for the show today, sweetheart? Let's go. Let's I go. am ready. Today is five ways to take care. Ooh. Everybody say take care. Take care. To take care of your husband. And like I said, we've been married for 24 years. And my running joke is that it's been the best 22 years of my life mm -hmm. because the first two years, it was bad. It was bad. Um, and I usually say, um, now that you got yourself together, things are a whole lot better. And, you know, every joke has like half truth to yeah. it. And there are elements of truth. But if I was serious, there was a season when we, when we're, our marriage was headed for the divorce that you decided to be the hero in the home. Mm -hmm. There were specific things that you did to win my heart. There were specific things you did to create the right atmosphere in the home. There were specific things that you did that got my attention and moved me from going that way to going the right yeah. way. And I wanted just to take a segment today and just let you share the principles with women around the world, with wives that just want to be the best wives that they can be. We are here. We are ready for you to fry us. We are your egg. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's just get into it. Let's talk about it. Let's do it. So I have five ways to take care of your husband. Uh -huh. And, you know, I'll just say up front that this is my perspective, okay. you know, and it's not the only five ways, but there are just five principles maybe uh -huh. um, that I apply to our marriage. Tell and us. some of them have been, you know, like tested and proven, okay. you know, because like I've learned the hard way, yeah. all of that stuff. But I want to start with number one mm -hmm. or, or actually, let me say this. Because this happened just recently. Uh -huh. We went to see a movie. Uh, uh -huh. We had a date night. Uh -huh. We went out with some pastors. Uh -huh. And um, we went downtown Orlando and saw a live play. Uh -huh. And it was about a woman who um, was on Broadway, all of this stuff. She was a, a, a big a big to-do, uh -huh. right? And they're telling the story of her relationship. Well, she falls in love with a man. And the man just comes out there in kind of an argument and he says, because I love you. And she's like, Oh, you love me. And he immediately, she, then she immediately says back to him, let's get married. And then she goes on and on about getting married and living in this happily ever after life. And at that moment, I felt like, Oh my goodness, this is going to end up badly. This is not going to be right. She already made a major mistake in that. She just jumped the gun. Like he just said, I love you. And she's, like she didn't even give him the the opportunity to propose mm -hmm. to go ring shopping mm -hmm. to tell his friends and family about her mm -hmm. to do anything she just let's get married and then they fast forward you know they get married and all throughout their marriage mm -hmm. they're getting into arguments because there's a power struggle going on in their relationship she's famous and wealthy mm -hmm. she doesn't need him to provide for her mm -hmm. and so but he wants to be a man he wants to provide for his family he doesn't need to make more money than her he just wants to provide he just wants to make decisions but she would come in and at one point she just had a baby and she wanted him to stay home <laughs> and take care of the baby she didn't want him to go to work and do his thing she wanted him to stay home and because take care of the baby so much money while she, she went at work yeah, yeah she was very wealthy she was a wealthy singer but he was kind of dying on the inside. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it was, and I'm saying, I'm, I'm just saying, there's all kinds of perspective, but I'm giving a perspective here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, on the inside, he, he 
he's like, yeah, you know, he would gladly stay home and take care of the baby, but there's something inside of him as a man. He wants to go and put his hands to the plow. He wants to work. And so anyway, to fast forward it there, marriage ended in divorce. And um, so it wasn't, you know, the happiest ending, but I knew from the beginning of the movie, this is how it's going to go and wh- down. And what was your point that you wanted My us point to take? is she did not know how to take care of her man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All throughout. Uh-huh. Yeah, there was a lot of mistakes that she made, but they haven't seen the show, so they don't know they exactly seen, what I know, we're talking I know, about. I know, I know. But that's what we want to prevent. Mm-hmm. We, we want to help, you know, and we'll do another one with husbands. So please, y'all, 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 we're, we're coming. We're, we're, we'll do one with husbands. How do you take care of your wife? But today, mm-hmm. we want to be a blessing. We want to be a lifeline. We want to help you because the woman to me has such a power. And uh-huh. a lot of women don't know the power or they use their power in a destructive way. And that wife, she has such an anointing and a power to be able to create an atmosphere mm-hmm. that resembles heaven, to be able to build him up or tear him down, Absolutely. to be able to encourage him or discourage him. And I tell people all the time, especially those looking to get into ministry, I'm like, you got to be careful who you marry. Mm. Especially, I mean, I'm telling you, people say, well, I feel a call of God on my life. I always look at their spouse and I see um, how mature is their spouse because who you who you marry does matter. There's a law called the law of the lid. And sometimes you can be have this great call and want to do some great things. But if you marry someone who's down here, you're going to put yourself under that Mm. lid. So I need you just to help us because I, I feel like. This is an area that you get an A plus in. Oh. You get an A plus in. Now you could be doing a little I bit try. better right now, I but try. you're kind of running all around trying to handle all hey. kinds of things, and that's another conversation. We have some family meetings that we need to have people. But for the most part, I know your heart. Your mm-hmm. heart is to take care of your man. Mm-hmm. Can you just share with us these five things? Yes. Okay. okay. Number one, mm-hmm. honor him in the home. Okay. Honor him in the home. I feel like, you know, honor is a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. I will even throw like honor, respect. In my experience, um, the man needs to be honored Mm -hmm. in his own home. Mm -hmm. When he comes home, he needs to feel like this is his house. Mm -hmm. I like for my man to feel like he is the king of the castle. Mm -hmm. You know, every, and I'm just saying, you know, in general, Mm -hmm. Men want to be the king of their castle. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to come home and they want to feel like they have a say so in their own house. And I feel like so that honor thing is big for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I do little things and every person is different, Mm -hmm. but I do little things to just help you feel like, okay, you have a place in this house and you're honored when you come home. When our kids were smaller. Even now, when you walk through the door Mm -hmm. and they're just laying down eating or watching TV or whatever, like I've trained them to acknowledge Mm -hmm. the fact that your daddy, that your father just walked through the door. Mm -hmm. Hey, dad, how you doing today? Girls, get up, give him a hug, give him a kiss. You know, son, Mm -hmm. even sons, get up and give your daddy a hug, you know, welcome him home. Um, So things like that, Mm -hmm. uh, little things like, um, you know, uh, when you when you eat. When we have dinner, Mm -hmm. basically every day, you know, we have a family dinner together and um, I let the kids know like, okay, wait, we're all going to wait till daddy comes down because you're usually in the office somewhere and Mm -hmm. everyone's doing stuff. And so I get on Alexa and I'm like, Alexa, announce it's time to eat. So everyone comes down to the kitchen. We don't pray and bless the food until daddy gets here. Where's daddy? You know what I mean? So when you get down in the kitchen, Mm -hmm. we all wait, we bless the food. And then they know because kids will eat everything. They will just, they will just demolish everything in sight. And so very very selfish, very self-centered. What they want to do is grab their (laughs) food. food and take all the, you know, and it's like, but we don't have anything. It's tore up. No, they know, wait, Mm -hmm. I'm going to get daddy's plate and I'm going to serve daddy first. Now, everyone might not do that. I know people who, you know, the man comes and serves a wife, but in my house, Uh that's what I like to do. But you like that too, in your house, you like that honor and respect that I give to you. Yes, amen. And so, and it's my love language too. So Mm -hmm. I like, I serve your plate. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) We learn, you know, some things I learned the hard way too, like a, a while ago, maybe years ago now, because you don't eat cake like you don't eat cake like that anymore. But Man, there was a time uh-huh. when I would bake cakes. I would bake a cake weekly yeah. because if there wasn't a piece of cake for you to eat at night before you went to bed, you did not like it. Uh-huh. But the kids, they would eat the cake, and I mean, months went by, and at the end of the day, you would come home and be like, "Where? Who ate the last piece of cake?" And I'm like, "Oh Lord, somebody ate the last piece of cake." <laughs> 
So then I made the kids, hey, do, there is a rule in our house to this day. Everybody they will abides. not eat the last piece of cake, the last cupcake, the last cookie, the last piece without of pie coming without coming to ask mm -hmm. daddy because, mm -hmm. that I mean, that's just what it is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they're little things, but I want you to feel honored mm -hmm. in your own home. You know, like, can I come home, please open up the refrigerator and get a drink without having it emptied out because everyone else came in to get their stuff. Mm -hmm. There's just little things that I like to pay attention to what you like. Well, first off, I would say thank you for that. You're welcome. Because it does make me feel, it does make me feel good. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel valued. It makes me feel loved. And it does make me feel honored. And, and you know the Bible, because I go back to the, mm. the Word of God with everything, it says that the wife should honor her mm -hmm. husband or reverence her husband, mm -hmm. just like um, I owe you do benevolence. I think we owe each other benevolence, and we owe each other honor. Absolutely. But I think it's important for wives to know that God has hard hardwired a man to, um, to receive honor. But I would ask this question, why do you think that's hard for some women? Because even as I'm saying this, I almost feel some woman's flesh kind of rising like, but he don't honor me, and why do I have to do that? I, I don't want to build up his ego. And for some reason, and I saw this back in the day, like in the old school church, mm -hmm. if they had a pastor, they would almost want their pastor to go through. If he got a nice Cadillac, people get upset that he had a new car. It was almost like they wanted to keep him humble. They wanted to keep him low. They wanted mm. to keep him poor, not knowing that you can't go beyond the head. Yeah. And so they actually wanted to tear him down. And I think there's some wives in the home that they would rather tear down their husband because they don't want him to get the big head. Mm. I don't want him to think that he's all that. And actually, you're hurting yourself by tearing him down instead of building him up. Yeah. But I don't know. What's your perspective on I think that is something that most of us have been taught or heard somewhere along yeah. the line, whether it was from a family member or a TV mm -hmm. show or something we've heard in the world, is that we need to keep people humble. Mm -hmm. And that is not a godly principle, though. Mm -hmm. um, God does not do things like that. To, I mean, God will humble us, mm -hmm. but it's not like we don't have to... Control Control, to make manipulate. Them yeah. They have to be humble by their own... Yeah, and, and as okay. for me, mm -hmm. you know, the Bible does um, teach that you reap what you sow. Okay. And I do what I do as seeds because mm -hmm. I want you to treat me the same way. Mm -hmm. um, but then also, um, I don't know, I just feel like it is something that, I don't know, I forgot what I was going to say. No, it's okay. Um, I mean, I, I think it's so good. I mean, to me, honor, um, I, I just feel like we need to hear more teaching on honor. Mm -hmm. We need to do more study on honor because honor is not a position of weakness. It takes an, um, a very mature person to deflect honor because a lot of people, they want honor for themselves. Mm -hmm. I want to be built up. I want to be on a pedestal. I want this, that, and other. But what you're saying is that you're sowing honor. So one of the reasons that I honor you so much, mm -hmm. and I'm always talking about honoring your wife, serving your wife, submitting to one another. Mm -hmm. I, I want to make your dreams come to pass is because that is the harvest of the seed that you've been sowing. Now you could flip it around and say, it's the harvest of the seed that I've been sowing. Yeah. But I don't know who's sowing more or who's sowing first. All I know is that I like my harvest and you like yours. Mm -hmm. And I'm really trying to help somebody who just feels like, no, he got to do it for me before I do it for him. And it's an eye for an eye. No, why don't you sow there before you can go there? And there's just something about a man's heart that will be transformed and changed when you just decide to honor him. I just, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I would tell any wife, just make up something this week just to honor your husband, build him up, encourage him, and just watch what it does on the mm -hmm. inside. Watch his response to mm -hmm. that. Yeah, I think, I mean... Yeah, that's that's all I did. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you we said at the beginning of the podcast, mm -hmm. like the first two years were terrible. Yeah. And then you mentioned me being the hero in the home. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't really think I was the hero. Yeah. I was just a person who I did my part. Like the marriage was terrible. 50% of it was because of me. Mm -hmm. And I had to get myself together. Yeah. And once I got myself together, it was just like, okay, let me get my marriage together. Yeah. And so what I was doing was making decisions based on the word of God yeah. um, to serve my man and love you and build you up mm -hmm. um, so that I can have have the relationship that I want, mm -hmm. but I found in that mm -hmm. because of the b biblical principles that when I was good to you, you were good to me. Come on, let's do and, that. And you know, when I lifted that's you a, up, listen, you had lifted me up. That's a lot up. better than me being bad to you because you've been bad to me and you being bad to me because I've been bad to you. No, flip that thing. I'm going to do good to you because you've been good to me and I'm going to just keep doing good no matter what you do though. Mm -hmm. 
But we can go on and on with that. Can you give us number two? Yeah, okay. Right. Number two is uh-huh. create space for him in the home. Create space. Figuratively mm-hmm. and lig- li- literally. Talk okay, so create space, meaning, okay, so um, I guess, you know, whenever you come into your own home, mm-hmm. I think that it's really easy for um, the woman, and I'll speak for myself, we have so many rules and we decorate the house and we put, you know, we design the house, we do everything the way we want it to be, mm-hmm. that sometimes the man can come home and we treat you like one of the kids or you have so many rules. Yeah. So when you come home, I believe that a man wants to come home and feel like this is my house. Like yeah. I said, I'm the king of this castle, mm-hmm. not to degrade the woman because you're the queen. Yeah, I feel like we have to add a lot of disclaimers uh-huh. there, but uh, but no, it's true. Like, listen, we're together. Mm-hmm. What mine is yours and what yours is mine. But there is something that's valuable about a man coming home and feeling like, man, I'm taking care of. And like of. I said, I do this, I say this uh-huh. because this is trial and error. Okay. I have been at a point where I had so many rules set because maybe I was taking care of the yes, kids and did. I was working and I was trying to Tell do them. ministry. So I'm like, okay, I got the master plan. <laughs> this is how I'm going to do stuff, you know? And so, Ken, here's the rules. You just obey these rules and you just do what you got to do. So uh-huh. when you come home, you feel like, man, you're not even welcome in your own home because... Well, well it's twofold. Mm-hmm. I mean, one, I do like when you take care of everything uh-huh. domestically. Uh-huh. I'm actually in a season right now, I was just thinking this morning that man, our next family meeting, I want to have a little conversation about needing some domestic help here and there because I'm in a season where I'm feeling more weight and more pressure and then it kind of bleeds over to domestic stuff. So there's a part of me that just loves it when you just kind of have it so controlled. I'm just like, okay, well, she moved the couch around, but it looks good. And, <laughs> and she went and moved the TV. Like my wife is a mover of stuff. I do. And she's stronger than but me. But you've it given almost, me permission to do I, that. I, I mean, she will go and you <laughs> She will move a piece of furniture that should not be moved by you one used person to not alone. Like it. And I'll be like, How did you do that? Did you not blow out your back? Did you have 10 guys I come over and help you? I pray and mm-hmm. the angels of the Lord help me. I am not lying. So, anyway, what I'm saying is that she starts to move stuff that probably should not be moved. But I've given my wife, like, the green light. She can change whatever she wants to change in the house, decor it any way she wants to decor it. So, there's a part of me that likes that. Mm-hmm. But then the other side is that I just never want to be treated like a kid. That is a big annoyance mm-hmm. for me. So if you start talking to me like a tone or an angle as mm-hmm. if I'm 10 or 12 like the kids, mm-hmm. that's the part that I don't like. Mm-hmm. So I understand what you're saying about the rules and yeah. everything. And so I don't know. It, it's just, <laughs> and, and it takes conversation as uh-huh. well. And it's observation. And sometimes it's trial and error. Like I said, you never came to me and told me like, quit, you know, treat me like the kids. Maybe you did. Here and there I would say, hey, don't, don't, try, uh-huh. don't talk to me like uh-huh. a kid. Uh-huh. Um, And so that, you know, trial and error, but I found that, okay, let me back off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, One of the things that I found that really help is that, so, you know, we have rules and you need rules, Mm -hmm. Um, but some of the rules I would just make up and not let you know about it. (laughs) And so you would come home and I'm like, take off your shoes. It's a new rule. Everybody has to take off their shoes in the house. And you're just like, well, yes, ma'am. And I'm like, don't put them there. Put them over here. Take, you know, like, don't leave your briefcase there. I put it in a different, like, you know, I'm barking all of these rules at you. Uh-huh. But what I found is, okay, that was a mistake. Don't do that. Cause that, that doesn't turn out nice. Yeah. But when we have a family meeting, mm-hmm. we can sit down together and I say, Hey babe, I would like to make these rules because of these reasons. Mm-hmm. And we talk one another. And now it's not my rules that you have to obey like one of the kids. It's our rules. Well, that is a principle right there for any team or any organization. Mm-hmm. It's what we call buy-in. Mm-hmm. So even as a senior leader, if I come to my staff and I'm like, hey, guys, we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we're going to do that. There's a percentage of early adapters that are like, yeah, let's go. Then we got the mid adapters like, I'm not sure. Then we got the late adapters. They're like, I don't see it at all. And so as a leader, my job is to get buy-in. And so as a wife, what you're trying not to do is go in and just bark orders, but you're presenting them in a way, this is what I'd like to do yeah. and why, because then it's not your rules, it's our rules. Yes. And I just feel like it's important that when we have talked, but you're, there's a, uh, what we're just saying is like high level, because you got to mm-hmm. have family meetings, you got to have communication, and we're trickling on down to agreement, you know, but I think it's, it's important. Yeah, absolutely. But I will say this. Can I say this before you jump where where you're going to go? I feel like the Holy Spirit is saying that there are some wives who love our podcast, and it's time for them to invite their husbands 
to start mm-hmm. watching this podcast yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, I know that we have a great majority of women and wives who are listening and watching, but it's really time for them to invite the men that are in their lives mm-hmm. because there are men and men need this even more than women sometimes. Yeah. We need principles, we need mentorship, and we don't even know it. And there are many men that are out there and they're doing everything in their first generation. They didn't have a father, they didn't have a, a husband to look at. And some of them did, but it wasn't a good example. Mm-hmm. And they need modern mentorship of principles that work for today's marriage. And so I just want to invite you guys to start to invite the men in your yeah. life to tune into this podcast because there are, um, God's given me an anointing for men. Like I can help because I'm a, I'm a man's man. I love talking to men. I can, I, I can help um, men on how to think, how to grow finance, provision, how to, how, how to build stuff, so mm-hmm. forth and so on. And so let's make sure that we do that. I feel well, like I got that from the it's Lord. It's just like the person who wrote in, she just played it out loud. You know, just put it on the TV screen throughout the day when you're cleaning the house and, you know, let your husband hear it. And, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. it's good stuff. And for all my men who's been tuning in, love you guys. Let's keep up the good work. What else you got for us today? Okay, so make space for him. And this is good, by the way. Thank you. Good, uh-huh. good. Yeah. Make space for him um, figuratively, uh-huh. you know. Um, one thing I would say about that, too, is also paying attention to what you like. This kind of goes into honor uh-huh. and making space. Okay. It's like paying attention to what you like. Yes. So, like, you like basketball, and I know you like it. I do. And so when the game comes on, uh-huh. I turn on the game on the TV. So when you walk in the door, you know, you're watching the game. Or if it's like, you know, a Sunday afternoon and the kids are playing and, you know, when the kids were growing up, sometimes they're watching all of these cartoons, cartoons and stuff like that. No, they we're not going to do it. Over. Yeah, I don't let the kids take over. Daddy's in the house. Let's yeah. put on the basketball game. I teach the kids basketball. Uh-huh. We all just partake in it as a family. Yeah, you. I, um, some of what we're talking about, because we don't go over these things many times before we have the podcast, you're reminding me of how you have woven these principles through our home. Mm -hmm. And as you're talking, I'm thinking like, yeah, when I come in, no one fights me over what to watch. Right. I can watch whatever I want to watch, like whatever daddy wants to watch is what we're going to watch. And I'm not a, I'm not a bonehead either. Like I'm like, I'm not trying to take over all the time. I'm always like, well, I'm letting everybody do whatever they want to do, but God knows that it's, um, it's good that you've set that culture. Yeah. And if you're not careful and I know like the kids, you know, kids cam, I'm talking a lot about kids because before we had kids, I just set the house. Like I knew what you like Uh and I didn't have three kids to care for 24 seven. So it was all about you. And I did so much Uh, for you at that time. You miss those times, I know. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna we'll kick these kids out. We're gonna get back there. We'll get there Hallelujah. one day. I love my kids, but but like got, even got our kids go. now, like there's a place that you sit at uh-huh. at our table at the kitchen table. There is Talk a about place. That. There is your seat. Jesus. And you know, other people might not care, but in my house, uh-huh. there's a seat that you sit. You sit at and the head of the this table. One stink kid that always wants to sit in my space. She wants to go <laughs> in your <laughs> seat, her. and I have to. Right. And like just like the day before yesterday, I had to go and tell her because you weren't home yet why are you sitting in your daddy's seat uh-huh. get like i'm i make because there's a seed of honor that i'm trying to sow uh-huh. like go get get out of the seat he's coming let it be ready for and him and we're jokingly telling you this because i think that this kid right here just likes to be where we are she, it's almost like she is probably a leader in the making and going to be it's it's out of are, love but it's like if it's mine, she wants it. If it's yep. yours, she wants it. She will take your hair stuff. She will sit in your seat. She will act like you are not there. And it's just like, oh, my God. So I see you. I mean, this is like a weekly conversation. Yeah. Get out of daddy's seat. Get out of daddy's seat. Get your own seat. And it's almost like, why Why even sit there? Like, she'll come <laughs> start looking around like, you know you're not supposed to be sitting I think sitting she there. likes it just uh-huh. for us to be like, move. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She likes the tough love. Yeah, but it's a principle. Um, yeah, but yeah, anyway, that's just honor mm-hmm. and respect in your home, right. making space for you in the home. Thank you for and that. then literally making space. Mm-hmm. So, like, I found that um, for you mm-hmm. as a man, mm-hmm. there's times where you just want to be alone. Mm-hmm. You don't want to talk to anyone, whether it's five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour, a couple hours. You just need your thinking space. 
your private time. Give us perspective on that. The perspective is, and I hear this like, I need my private time too. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I go in my bathroom. I take a bath. I like as a woman in my house, mm-hmm. I, I know where to go. Mm-hmm. I would literally hide from our kids when they were younger. Mm-hmm. Okay. And just be like, okay, I need five minutes. Mm-hmm. But as a man, I just make sure or as, as a wife, I make sure that you have a space that's yours. Mm-hmm. Now, right now you have a you know, you used to have an office that was just like all yours. But right now I have a space where it's like your office. And you set that space up for me. And I made it specifically for you. And she comes and she'll put all of my cell phone wires, all of my laptop wires so that I don't have to look for anything. Well, I know you don't do down. that. I organize she'll everything. She'll organize everything for me. All your pens are here. And I'll just walk in one day and she'll just have everything completely in order because she knows at the pace that my life goes, that's something that's a blessing to me. Yeah, it's just like your personal assistant in the house. Like, mm-hmm. okay, um, we moved into a new house. Okay, you're going to need an area set up. And I asked you before, baby, what is it that you need? Mm-hmm. Will this function right for you? Okay, I think I'm going to buy you a new one of these. This mm-hmm. one's old. And I set it all up Thank to you, you for, for you. But then there's also things like in our bedroom. I have a space for you in the bedroom. Like there's you a do. couch, there's a TV, there's mm-hmm. tables. The remote sits right here on uh-huh. your side of the bed. Like uh-huh. everything. I have a couple spaces that are tailored just for you. You're preaching good. Um, but it's just because I want you to be able to come home and feel welcome in your home. Uh I want you to feel honored and respected in your own home. Mm -hmm. And I want you to feel like it is a safe place for you. Like, um, Mm -hmm. just let me go here for like 10 minutes, put my feet up and relax. Now, some people might not have a a separate office or den or a big bedroom or whatever, but you could have a chair with a stool that he can put his feet up on just for a few minutes, like make a space in the corner of the living room, someplace that Mm -hmm. could be his own. I found Mm -hmm. that for you, Mm -hmm. that works well for your mental health. Mm -hmm. Um, So It works well for my ability to handle the weight and the Mm -hmm. pressure and the persecution that I'm under. It, it, it gives me strength to go back out the doors and to win spoil, to bring it home to my family. Mm-hmm. It gives me um, the wind beneath my wings, so to say, to continue to be a spiritual leader in the home. Mm-hmm. It's just the breath of fresh air, and you create that atmosphere. And I think that wives have that power to do that. Absolutely. Um, I kind of parked for a minute on the part that you said that men have might not need five minutes or 10 minutes to do nothing. And I kind of wanted to validate that a tad bit because that might seem strange. Yeah. And I think it's okay when we say men and women, we're talking in generalizations. There might be a woman who says, I need that too. Well, that's fine. But what I'm saying is that for a husband, just because he needs five, 10, 15, 20 minutes of just quiet time doesn't mean that he's not connected. It doesn't mean that um, he, he doesn't want to give you affection or put you first in other areas. Mm -hmm. It means that he just needs time to almost, um, for me, it's almost like, just give me time to think, Mm -hmm. give me time to almost, I want to use the word like defrost or like, what is the word when you're just like, okay, unload, unload, unwind for a minute, decompress, and then jump into it with the kids. And so the hardest part for me is sometimes when I'm out and I'm making all of these decisions and then I come home and then as soon as I walk in the door, there's, Kid decisions, homework decisions, family decisions, all these decisions. And it's like if I had a little bit of space to be like, give me like 20, 30 minutes to kind of unwind, maybe have some food, then I can kind of recharge to handle more responsibility Mm -hmm. and more decisions. And so I don't know what I'm hearing. What you're saying is that you protect my nothing box. Mm -hmm. That's not offensive to you. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that for some women that might be. I don't know if it's offensive or uh, might not understand. It's it's you don't understand. Uh-huh. And, you know, I've been there okay. and it's trial and error, ladies, uh-huh. wives. And these are really like wives of, you know, y- with young kids. You okay. know, it's hard because when you come home, you have the kids running at you uh-huh. and you got to make dinner or like whatever your responsibilities are. So you can feel like, well, I want a nothing box, too. I want time for me, too. But I don't have the ability to do that. It's just an adjustment. And now the Bible says that as wives, we have the ability to adapt. We are adaptable in any situation when it comes to our husbands, our family, and our family life. And so when... I, what I did Mm -hmm. is that I knew that when you come home, Mm -hmm. right, typically I would pick up the kids from 
daycare, so right? So you're kind of getting there, getting home first. Yeah, I'm it's getting home first. It's not saying that you're first. not working. It's not saying right. you don't have other responsibilities. It's just that you got home right. first. I pick up the kids from daycare. Mm-hmm. And so in the car, you know, um, we come home. When I would get home, I would let the kids, because the kids mm-hmm. I found were just like me. Mm-hmm. They just got home from a day, uh, whether it's school or daycare or whatever, mm-hmm. they just want to go to their rooms too and chill out and do nothing. And so what I would do was I already had pre-made snacks. Mm-hmm. The kids know, go get a snack. And either they're going to go to their rooms or like with their babies, two and three and stuff, they would go. We had playpens. I would sit them in a playpen and I would turn on whatever their favorite TV show was. They didn't watch TV all day, but they might have 20 minutes or a 30 minute little show Mm -hmm. um, that I turned on and they had their snack and they ate and they played in their little, you know, playpen area. The child is safe and mommy is sitting down on the couch. Mommy's having a cup of tea. Mommy's doing whatever she wants to do but I would build in those spaces for me Mm -hmm. and then when daddy came home an hour later or whatever daddy can come in he can get a kiss from the kids they go and they yeah because they're yay daddy's home Mm -hmm. you know they give a kiss to daddy and then daddy can go upstairs and do what he needs to do Mm -hmm. just like mommy did and if there were times where I feel like you know what this is just too much I really need a break Mm -hmm. babe you know go ahead when you come downstairs Mm -hmm. Let me go upstairs for like 30 minutes. I need to take a hot bubble bath. And we communicate Communicate and we plan those things. But as the wife, I have the ability to make all of that happen. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Amen. Um, let, f- for the sake of time, let's let's keep it moving. Okay, uh, number, three, number three, uh-huh. number three, easy peasy is to serve him. Okay, and um, you know I love to serve. Uh-huh. I don't think serving is something that's bad. I serve you. Talk you to me serve about serving. me. Give give, give the ladies, give mm-hmm. the wives some examples mm-hmm. of how they can serve their husbands. Well, I've given examples all throughout this podcast, yeah. mm-hmm. um, but particular two things I want to talk about. Well, yeah. one thing really is Ken's night. Okay, and you know it's so funny because I was just speaking. Um, um, at an event a little while People ago. People of God, we are due a Ken's night. And let this be a you reminder. know, so so Ken's night was something that I established before I had children. Uh-huh. Okay, um, and it was back when we were getting our marriage together. I said. And then it was a Tuesday night. I said, I'm going to pick one night every week and I'm going to serve my man. I'm going to bless him. I'm going to give him a manicure, a pedicure. I mean, not everything in one night, but, you know, one night it might be a mani-pedi. One night it might be a full body massage. One night it might be a little, you know dancey dancey going on it might be a dinner and a movie it might be dessert it could be like just anything I would just pick things Mm -hmm. just to serve you you know and you alone and so it ended up being amazing I mean I did it for years until we had a baby and it was just like once a month Mm -hmm. and then just doesn't happen anymore (laughs) (laughs) but every once in a while I will break out like you know like currently I have a massage table in this year I've gotten four maybe yes yes it was my goal to do it every month but I guess I fell off and forgot about it yeah it's all good yeah but I do have a massage table in our closet Mm -hmm. I have a foot bath Mm -hmm. in our closet come on let's break it out so that whenever I you know want to give a give a Ken's night Uh I can I whip it out real quick I move the couch to the side I put up my massage table and I'm like baby light the candles um you know all of that what's the purpose or the why behind the kids Um, night the why behind it was for me I just like it when you feel like I have the best wife in the world okay let's pause right there because you're dropping some good groceries today um you like it when I feel like I have the best wife in the world yes I would challenge, encourage a wife who's watching or listening to make their mind up that they want their husband to feel like they have the best wife in the world and make a list of things that you can do to make him feel that way and do it even before he starts doing it for you and just watch how it changes Mm -hmm. things in the home. Watch how it improves things in the home. But I like it that you like that. And I feel that way. I feel that way. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just like a Uh real Bible girl. I Uh love the Bible. Uh And um, when I think about, you know, um, was it Sarah in Mm -hmm. the Bible that called Abraham Lord, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's not like Lord, like God, Lord, but Mm -hmm. just as in like, sir, Mm -hmm. you know. um, It was a respect. It was was out of respect and honor. And I just feel like I. That's what you should do. You should call me Lord Ken. And (laughs) I. (laughs) 
<laughs> you wouldn't. That's do that. weird. <laughs> I know you don't I was want me to see do how that. How far you's gonna take it? I don't know. Um, but <laughs> um, I just like that, like that honor. I want to yeah. serve you. Do it as unto the Lord. And so anyway, so that that is Ken's night. But I was, I was a, a lady came up to me. Mm -hmm. Um, just like a a little while ago. And she was like, I went out and bought a massage table because she's doing, I forget her husband's name, but she is doing a, you know, Ken's night for her husband. All these years you've been talking about Ken's nights Mm -hmm. and serving your man. That's the only woman that you've ever met that went out and bought a massage table. Yeah. It just makes me think, are people hearing or are they doing? Amazon, you can get a massage table. We want to hear more testimonies of you guys going to get a massage table, not just because of the massage table, just because you're a doer but of the But here's word. the thing, it's ladies. The doers that shall be now, blessed. this isn't why I got a massage table, uh-huh. but m- he will go and take the massage table out of the closet that I bought for him and set it up and light the candles. So the blessing comes back. When you sow the seed, oh, he will take that same massage table that mm-hmm. was meant for him uh-huh. and bring it and lay it out for you. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's great. Yeah. You reap what you sow. I mean, really, if you're watching this and you're not a believer yet, um, these things, these, these are Bible principles. When it comes to service, mm-hmm. service is something Jesus served us with his life. Mm-hmm. And so when you really grow in your faith, you will have this spirit of servitude. It's the same way that we serve our communities. It's the same way that we serve the, the poor. It's the same way that some serve in prisons. Um, it's the same way that Jesus served us by getting us getting Absolutely. on the cross. Now you've positioned yourself to serve me, and I'm positioning myself to serve you. And it's a whole lot better than slapping each other. Mm-hmm. Serving each other is better than slapping each mm-hmm. other. Um, I was looking for wordplay with the S's, but serving and slapping was too far away. But y'all know oh what I mean. Oh, my goodness. Um, point number four. Let's go to point number Let's four. Let's go to point number five. four. Mm-hmm. Point number four is enjoy sex often. Oh, yeah. I talk mean, how can you one. talk about serving Wives, and taking listen, care of your uh, man if uh-huh. you don't talk about your sex I, life? I like it that you put enjoy sex enjoy often. Enjoy sex talk often. Yeah, because here's the thing. Mm-hmm. He, I'm, I'm speaking for the husbands, and I, I know about you. Please. Is that he doesn't want you to just have sex to get over it and just to get done with it, but he wants you to have sex and enjoy it. We don't want the wet, the the wet fish, where it's like she just laying there while you get what you got to get and hope this is over with, and you just just this sloppy wet fish. That doesn't <laughs> seem attractive or that, fun at all. I know, but that's Please. what some you know, like let's yeah. just get this over yeah. with. No. <laughs> I actually got that from somebody else. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, and I think, so he wants you to enjoy it, uh-huh. and he wants you to have fun with it. And then also, and this is something that I got from you, and I get this from you often, is that you want me to initiate sex. Yeah. And I don't know if we were in Not like all the a... the time, but every once in a while. We were great. in like a question and answer uh-huh. in front of a big group of people at one point. And um, you said that and all the men were like, yeah. Like they all wanted their wives Thousands to initiate sex. And I was just like... First, I mean, honestly, I was annoyed. Like, what do you mean? Like, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. But when I like sitting down thinking, and I heard all you of these the men man. go into yeah, an uproar. I was man. just like, whoa, this isn't just my husband. This is kind of like a man thing. Uh-huh. And it doesn't mean every day, but every once in a while, you know what I mean? Plan it out. Like, yeah. you know, I I know like, you know, if it's like a, you know, I'm going to plan out on this Wednesday night because the kids are here and this is that. And then I'm just going to get these candles. I'm going to go out to and buy a new nightgown. Like I will plan things out in my mind you don't know anything about it Uh but that's my way to initiate okay good well i love it i love it good 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 all right okay and so number five Uh number five is this take care of you okay wife you have to take care of yourself now the bible says that the wife is like a crown to her husband's head and i know the husband does not want to be walking around with a Raggedy, dirty, corner. raggedy, old, broke down, not shined up crown. Mm-hmm. And so what I found is that if I don't feel good, mm-hmm. you don't feel good. You know what I mean? Like you, you're not happy. They say happy spouse, happy house, happy wife, happy life. And they say that for a reason. Mm-hmm. If I am like sick all the time, mm-hmm. like you just really not doing your best. Mm-hmm. If I am frustrated and always angry because there's something going on at my job all the time or there's sometimes 
type of family drama all the time or everything's great in my life, but I just am always complaining and yeah. nothing's ever good enough. That is just stressful for you. It's uncomfortable. Like you are not going to be completely on a 10 unless wifey yeah. is like feeling good. And so I think it's very important for us to take care of ourselves. Yeah. Like, yes, we are boss ladies. I personally, I like to be over the top in, every, in everything, which can be, it's hard because then it's too much. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, girl, go take a nap somewhere. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But when I have my stuff together and I am on top, that's when you are able to be on top mm -hmm. and not concerned about what's going on in my life. You know, like really to like, if I'm breaking down, it's hard for you to be happy and really enjoy life. And so I think yeah. we need to schedule our doctor appointments and yeah. go to our doctor appointments, um, counseling appointments, yeah. um, you know, look good, put yeah. on some lotion and perfume, <laughs> do your hair. No and listen, actions. ladies, not just not just for him or anybody else, but I found like I want to look good for me, you know, especially at this point in my life after, you know, overcoming cancer and having three kids and now I'm going through menopause. I'm like, girl, yes, I want to look good for my man, but like I want to put this lotion on so that I can feel good about myself and, you know, put some chapstick on when I go to bed and wear some nice nighties and underclothes when I go to bed. Yes, for me, you mm -hmm. know, for my husband, but also for me, because I found out when I feel good and I'm confident about myself, that's what makes you most attracted to me. And that's what makes you most, you know, happy on your own. Yeah. Wow. 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 You have given us um, five great keys. And uh, my hope is that wives around the world are going to take these keys and simply see their marriage get better. Um, if you guys enjoyed what Tabitha just gave you, can you just let us know in the comments? Can you just let us know by liking this and sharing this with other women around the world? I don't know. I think that this is just such a different angle than what's in the world. Mm -hmm. In the world, um, I see women who are tearing down men and men who are tearing down and abusing women. Mm -hmm. But in the kingdom of God, it's the exact opposite. We build up. We are a different breed. This is a different culture mm -hmm. where we're going to build up. And I just wanted to say, um, um, I want to say on the behalf of all men, thank you for leading that way, not just because of me, but by a kingdom example. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen you go from unsaved to saved, and I've seen you grow over the years and I know that you are loving me because you love God and you're honoring me because you honor God. And I'm simply getting the overflow of the walk that you have with Jesus. And I receive it 100 percent. You know. <laughs> and now when I hear these things, I simply want to reciprocate. Mm -hmm. I want to go and I want to make your dreams come to pass. And I want to yes. honor you and I want to come up with Tabitha's nights and I want to take you to Paris, which I already did. And this year we're going to Italy and I want to, I want to help whatever you want come. I want your life to be as easy as it possibly can. I want to make sure that everything that you have is met. And I think we'll do that. Let's do it. Uh, I'll do a segment about how a husband can take care yeah. of his wife. Maybe we'll do that next. Let's, Let's do, that do next. it. Y'all join us next week. It's going to be good. Hey, we're out of time for today, but we hope that you enjoyed today's broadcast. Um, if you're new to our podcast, make sure that you hit the subscribe button. If you're on YouTube, if you're on Apple Music or whatever you get podcast, make sure that you download it so that you can be the first to get the content as it is released. We drop a new episode every Thursday at 3 p.m. There's actually a bunch of people that join in live, but if you missed the live part at 3 p.m., make sure that you hit the follow up and uh, let us know uh, what you're getting out of this. We love to get your emails. We love to read your reviews. We love to um, see how it's being a blessing to you. Just know that your feedback actually really builds us up. It encourages Absolutely. us. It helps us keep on going. If you're interested with having a better marriage, I would love for you to check out our Better Marriage Boot Camp, a 90-day journey that we believe will help you have mm -hmm. a better marriage. Like I said in the beginning, you can check that out at KenAndTabitha.com. And um, we hope to see you real soon. We love you guys. If you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, make sure you come by and worship yes. with us. And until next time, we love you guys. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.